Hello to you all from Mr. CFT team. What I'm going to teach you in this tutorial is how to simulate acoustic module and noise generation in ANSYS Fluent Software. So sit tight and follow me till the end. This training is prepared in five chapters. In the first chapter, the introduction about error acoustics is discussed and the general concepts related to sound waves that you need to be aware before entering the simulation phase into Fluent Software are presented in this chapter. In the two next chapters, i.e. chapters 2, 3, and 4 respectively, Williams and Hawking's model is given in chapter 2 and an educational example in the Fluent Software is explained. In the third chapter, the wave equation model is presented in the same way and in the fourth chapter, the broadband noise model is given and a simulation example is explained in the same way as in chapters 2 and 3. Finally, in the fifth chapter, the summation and comparison of these methods are discussed and conclusions are drawn from this training course. Now in the first step, what we're going to do is to actually define the term and word acoustic. Acoustic is a word that has a Greek root and uh, actually has a meaning of uh, audible or something that is heard. Acoustic itself uh, is a branch of physics that studies the generation and propagation of mechanical waves such as longitudinal and lateral waves in liquid and solid and gas environments. It also can be said that acoustic means uh, the knowledge of sounds creating, playing, manipulating, and transmitting sound effects. And finally, it should be mentioned that acoustic itself is divided into two main categories including vibration and sound, uh, and in this tutorial what we're going to do is to actually focus on the sound part. Now let's say what is aeroacoustics? Aeroacoustics is a branch of acoustic science that briefly deals with noise production. Noise can be created through the movement and uh, interaction of turbulent fluid flow with surfaces and walls. In fact, turbulent fluid movement is accompanied by changes in pressure, density, and therefore changes in velocity of that fluid. And these changes, uh, which are oscillatory in nature, of course, uh, are the source of sound waves and sound generation. Uh, as a result, it can be said that many of the sounds that are uh, technically important in the industry are produced by fluid flow disturbance. Most of the sounds that are important in industrial applications are produced and spread in fluid flow. Uh, therefore, phenomena related to sounds can be understood and analyzed in the general framework of fluid dynamics. On the other hand, uh, the equations governing acoustics are actually the same ones that contain fluid flow. Therefore, one of the main ways to investigate sound waves and acoustic analysis is to use equations related to fluid flow to investigate sound propagation in all types of fluids. Different methods and algorithms have been introduced to investigate the generation and propagation of sound in fluids, and the main methods are introduced in the next slides. Sound analysis methods in fluids are generally divided into three categories the direct approach, the broadband noise source model, and the hybrid approach, which itself is divided into two categories. The first method is the integral approach using the Williams and Hawking's method, which is also known as FWH, and the second one is the differential sound propagation method based on the finite volume solver, which is also known as the wave equation. The first method mentioned was the direct method. Firstly, in this method, the production and propagation of sound waves are considered as coupled. And secondly, uh, they are obtained directly from solving fluid dynamics equation. In this method, compressible neighbor Stokes equation should be used. Also, this method is not accurate enough to calculate sound waves far away from the sound source. Considering that the solution method is direct, we need a very small mesh and time step size and therefore this method is considered to be very costly in terms of computer calculations because there is a need for extremely powerful computers to use this approach. The second approach is the hybrid method, the first type of which is the Williams and Hawking's method. In this method, noise generation and propagation are considered separately and are decoupled. Unlike the direct method, this method is suitable for predicting acoustics at a distance from the sound source. It is also possible to consider several sound sources and several receivers simultaneously. However, it has a very important limitation that it can be used to predict sound propagation in an open space and it cannot be used in an enclosed space such as a pipe. 
The second method in the uh, hybrid approach is the wave equation method. In this method, a difference that is actually considered an advantage compared to the previous method, which was FWH method, is that a wave equation model can also be used to predict sound propagation in enclosed spaces. We said that in the previous method, we cannot use, it, use FWH method in enclosed spaces such as pipe, but we can use the wave equation method in such spaces. Also, the governing equations were obtained assuming constant density, that is, for incompressible flows. So, we cannot use this method for compressible flows. The important thing is that in this method, we do not define a receiver because all points inside the domain are considered as receivers automatically. The last method that I'm uh, going to introduce you here is the broadband noise method. In many engineering applications that involve turbulent flu flows, a specific bandwidth cannot be considered for noises. That is, the sound energy is actually distributed over a continuous range of frequencies. In this case, the noise will be a broadband phenomenon. Unlike the direct method and the FWH integral method, in this method there is no need to solve the transient fluid equations and this method requires less computing time compared to other methods. Each type of wave carries energy with it, and when the waves enter from one environment to another material environment, they also transfer their own energy to the new environment. In fact, it is the same energy entered into the environment that causes the particles of that environment to vibrate, and as a result of transmission of vibration from particle to its neighboring particle, the wave energy is spread in that environment. Based on the existing relationships and the relationship you can see in this slide, the energy transferred from a wave to the particles of an environment has a direct relationship with the second power of the frequency and amplitude of that wave. In the following, we will show you how to calculate an important parameter such as the intensity of a wave from the energy into, entered into an environment. There are a series of quantities that are important to us when we analyze sound waves. One of them is sound intensity. You must have experienced the vibration created in glass, the body of a car, and the household item when loud music is played. This vibration is caused by energy transfer. In simple terms, the sound intensity that reaches a plane can be defined as the average rate of wave energy transfer, or the same power per unit area of that wave. Also, the relation for the sound intensity parameter is brought to you here in this slide. Now let's see what the decibel scale is. As it is clear from the human hearing range, the sound intensity ratio for this hearing range is actually the ratio of the most intense to the least intense sound and is a value in the order of 10 to the power of 12. For ease of working with values that changes in such a, a wide range, we can use logarithmic representation in base 10. For example, consider the function of y equal to the logarithm of x. If we multiply x by 10, the value of y increases by only one unit. So with logarithmic representation, if we multiply x, or sound intensity here, by 10 to the power of 12, y will increase by only 12 units. For this reason, it is better to use a new concept called sound level instead of sound intensity that changes in a wide range. Sound level is defined as given in the last relation of this slide. I0 is the base sound intensity. The intensity of the basic sound is equal to the human hearing threshold at a frequency of 1000 Hz. For I equal to I0, the beta value becomes 0, which means that the standard reference level corresponds to the 0 decibel value. Considering that measuring the sound intensity itself is not an easy task, we usually measure the sound pressure instead. Sound pressure is actually the pressure that a sound wave creates at a certain point and its value can be measured with a microphone. In this slide, the related equation is shown where I is equal to PV, where P is the acoustic pressure and V is the speed of the acoustic particles. Also, I is the sound intensity of the source at a specific point, and V itself is equal to P over rho C, where C is the speed of sound in the air. So if we replace them in the first equation, I would be equal to P in the power of 2 over rho C. Now, here we want to talk about sound pressure level. Sound pressure level, or SPL, 
is the sound intensity received from a sound source at a certain distance. In relation to the sound pressure level, the value for the P reference for air is different from other materials. These values for the P references are very important, because when you enter the software and want to activate the acoustics module, one of the items that must be set in the acoustics setting is the reference pressure. Now, when we're solving the acoustic problems uh, for materials such as air, we have to select the value for the P reference shown on the top. And when we are solving the acoustic problems for other materials, for example in water environment and when the problem is related to something such as a submarine, then we have to use the value of the P reference shown on the bottom part. Fourier transform is another thing that I want to address and talk about here. Many times we are talking about frequency, but when we are measuring a wave at a point in space, we are actually measuring a signal in the time domain. Now we have to convert these signals that are in the time domain to the frequency domain so that we can analyze them in terms of frequency. Fourier showed that a wave, any wave actually, can be created by uh, combining and superpositioning several simple sinusoidal waves uh, on each other. In addition to creating that wave in this way, the time domain can also be taken to the frequency domain. In this case, the main frequency of that wave will be revealed and it will tell us what frequencies are most effective and the most important. For better understanding, you can see the image placed in the middle of this slide. The red signal was measured in the time domain which itself consisted of several sinusoidal waves. When the Fourier transform signal is taken from this signal and wave and actually taken to the frequency domain, uh, it be uh, which becomes the blue signal, we can see that uh, from approximately 2000 frequencies onwards, the waves that played a role in the wave formation are not very important. Also, the highest frequency was approximately 500 Hz. That is, the most effective frequency of the wave that was effective in this signal was equal and roughly about 500 Hz. In general, if we want to do the Fourier calculation with mathematical relations, it's going to be very difficult. Therefore, we use the fast Fourier transform, which is an algorithm to quickly calculate the Fourier transform, and this transform is very important because most of our properties and frequen are frequency dependent. Pay attention to the acoustic calculation that we do in the Fluent Software in the future sessions and uh, you will see that at the end one of the tasks that we have to do is to prepare the signal. So fast Fourier transform is a very important issue to understand here. To benefit from Mr. CFT services including simulation, consultation and training contact our experts via info at mrcfd.com.